happy morning dear students today we are going to discuss the objective pattern of the engineering physics i am uh, sharing my screen just observe it yeah if you look at the first question if a material is a ferromagnetic what shall be the value of susceptibility so here we are having four multiple choice options <clears throat> among these negative ferromagnetic in the sense large and positive option c is the right answer if you just look at the answer option c is the correct answer second one which of the following is a diamagnetic material among these given option d is the right answer just observe it now materials in which the magnetization persists even after the field has been removed are called diamagnetic paramagnetic soft ferro hard ferro so the right answer is option d hard ferromagnetic materials at high temperature the ferromagnetic material becomes obviously it becomes paramagnetic option b is the right answer now coming to which material as shown in the figure has the ferromagnetic li magnetic lines of force are screwing inside the material in the sense it is a paramagnetic so obviously option b is the right answer now coming to the the value of b at h equal to 0 in the hysteresis loop or hysteresis curve is called and the magnetic field migil remaining magnetic field we call it as retentivity so option a is the correct answer now when a ferromagnetic rod is placed in a solenoid with current what happens to the rod for it is permanently magnetized in the sense option c is the correct answer now if you look at this diagram hysteresis curve what was the following diagram that means it is a hysteresis curve option b is the correct answer now the magnetic material in which the permanent atomic magnet dipoles have parallel orientation is termed as which one of the following parallel orientation in the sense it is a ferromagnetic so option c is the correct answer now example for diamagnetic material it is among the given copper bismuth h2o all are diamagnetic in the sense option d is the correct answer the strongest diamagnetic material is among the given bismuth is the strongest so option b is the correct answer the units of relative permeability <clears throat> relative permeability in the sense just look at that option d ampere per meter now coming to the spontaneous magnetization present in ferromagnetic anti ferro dia para so obviously it is ferromagnetics and then the magnetization per unit magnetic field intensity is called magnetic susceptibility option c is the correct answer and then nickel is diamagnetic paramagnetic ferro nickel obviously it is a ferromagnetic coming to unit 4 the de broglie wavelength of particle of mass m having a particle charge e then it is de broglie wavelength obviously option b lambda is equal to h by root over 2 mev now the velocity of the matter wave it depends on the various parameters it varies with the velocity of the particle that is option b is the correct answer now coming to the 
Next one, the concept of matter wave was suggested by D. Broglie. Option B is the correct answer. D. Broglie hypothesis states that, so it states the dual nature of matter. Option C is the correct answer. The wavelength associated with the D. Broglie is known as matter wavelength. So option C is the correct answer. Schrodinger time independent wave equation is differential wave equation of matter wave. So option C is the correct answer. If the momentum of a particle is increased to four times, then the de Broglie wavelength will become momentum is four times in the sense de Broglie wavelength means one fourth. De Broglie wavelength of an electron here the potential is voltage is given 100 volts. If you substitute it in the electron wavelength formula, then it will come around 1.227 angstrom units. According to De Broglie wave mechanics, particle material particle is associated with the matter wave that is called as wave packet. So option B is the correct answer. The wavelength of the matter wave is independent of charge. Obviously, remaining all the parameters, it depends. So option C is the correct answer. Assuming the velocity is same, which of the particle is having the longest wavelength? Electron, proton, neutron, alpha particle. Among these, neutron has the longest wavelength if the velocity is same. Because that depends upon the mass. Now coming to the rest mass of the photon <clears throat> rest mass of the photon is infinite so option d is the correct answer photon and an electron have the same wavelength then electron has greater momentum and then if one electron is subjected to 54 volt then its wavelength is this one is obviously Answer is option B, 0 0.167 nanometer. Dual nature of matter was predicted by Louis de Broglie. Option B is the correct answer. And then uncertainty principle states that the error in the measurement due to particle nature is small size of the particle. Obviously, option A is the correct answer. Which of the following can as both particle and wave, photon, electron, neutron, all of the above can act as a both particle and wave. Option D is the correct answer. A proton with energy, numerical problem. If you solve this problem by using the de Broglie formula, then you will get option C, 2 into 10 power minus 14 meters. The velocity of X-ray in the vacuum is less than the velocity of light, equal to velocity of light, greater than velocity of light. So obviously, none of the above. <clears throat> X-ray diffraction were discovered by Bragg. So option C is the correct answer. The walls of the particle in a box are supposed to be small but finite, infinite large but soft, soft and small infinitely hard and large. So option D is the correct answer. Now the wave function of the particle lies in which region? Wave function lies in between the zero and the length L. So option C is the correct answer. For a particle inside a box, the potential is maximum at half of the distance, half of the length <clears throat> for a particle uh, is maximum at length A. So option A is the correct answer. Sorry, it is option C is the correct answer. Now, Drude and Lorange developed <clears throat> a theory called classical free electron theory.
that is option a correct answer the physical wave function psi has physical dimension quantum free electron theory was proposed by summerfield that is option a is the correct answer and then <clears throat> Boundary conditions are used to found one among the following wave function. Boundary conditions are used to found the wave function. Yeah, it's numerical problem. If you solve it, then the option C is the correct answer. And uh, 29th one is also, if you solve the problem, option B is the correct answer. 30th one, with the increase of temperature, the Resistance of the metal also increases. Option A is the correct answer. Now coming to unit 5. The electrical conductivity <clears throat> of the semiconductor lies in between conductor and the insulator. So obviously option B is the correct answer. And then coming to in the hall coefficient is positive, then the semiconductor is p-type semiconductor. In pure semiconductor, the electric current is due to electron and holes. Because in the pure semiconductor, both are equal in number. Coming to 4, diffusion current and the mobility relation is given by Einstein. Option C is the right answer. And a small amount of pentavalent impurity is added to pure semiconductor. Pentavalent in the sense of pi valence electrons, hence it is called n type semiconductor. Electrical conductivity of semiconductor absolutely temperature is zero. So for five, it is B, and for six, it is C. And the Einstein relation between the drift and diffusion current <clears throat> it is obviously given by option A. In the intrinsic semiconductor, the Fermi level lies at the center of the forbidden gap. It is option A. Most commonly used semiconductor material is it is the combination of both uh, silicon and germanium. So option C is the correct answer. And at room temperature, the semiconductor material acts as a conductor. Hence, option C. And for 10th one, option B is the correct answer. And uh, for 11 and 12, these are all numerical problems. If you uh, direct question for the silicon energy band gap is uh, 1.1 uh, one electron for the germanium energy band gap is 0 0.72. So option C and D are the correct answers. And then the process of adding a impurities to the pure material is called doping. So option B is the correct. And for 14th one, option D is the correct. Similarly, the impurities of boron aluminum, then it became p-type semiconductor. Option B is the correct answer. And uh, for 16th one, option C is the correct answer. The mobility of electron in a material is expressed in terms of <clears throat> units. That is meter square per volt second. That is Option B is the correct answer. And then the energy gap in a semiconductor does not change with the temperature. Energy gap does not depend on temperature. Hence, option B is the correct answer. 19th one and 20th one, option A is the correct answer. And uh, if you observe the 21 and 22, semiconductor has negative temperature coefficient. Option C is the correct. And semiconductor has four valence electrons. Option D is the correct. Coming to 23rd and 24th one, option C and uh, option C are the right answers. The random moment of the electron and holes in a semiconductor, that is diffusion current, and so option A is the correct answer. And 26th also, option A is the correct answer. 27th and 28th, option B are correct answers. And then the expression for the electrical conductivity in intrinsic semiconductor is 
just observe the given options option c is the correct answer and the all coefficient for n type semiconductor is option d is the correct answer so these are all the model uh, objective questions thank you all all the best prepare well and write the well thank you so much